you know what I'm thinking? Of course you don't, because we can't read minds. That's just in comic books and movies. Or is it? In comics, the X-Men don't communicate through earpieces or walkie-talkies. They coordinate through one of their telepaths. This enables them to instantly share intelligence, to secretly plan strategies, to extract information from a subject, or verify whether someone's telling the truth. Telepathy is no longer just for mutants. We can now read and transmit our thoughts just like Professor Xavier. Let's find out how. In many ways, thoughts are like a language. It's how your brain and body communicate. But instead of words, your brain uses electrical and chemical signals. If we can figure out the signals associated with a particular word or an idea, we can decipher that language. That's what scientists have been doing since the 1990s. One way we've been doing this is through electroencephalography. EEG machines use sensors to record the electrical activity in the brain. When you think a certain thought, it creates a distinctive pattern of electrical signals. Scientists have been able to decipher these patterns and make out actions like lift or pull and states of being like happiness and boredom. The Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, is working on EEG-equipped helmets that will allow soldiers to communicate telepathically. They're currently reporting a 45% accuracy rate. They're working with commands like call in helicopter and enemy ahead, but they say it's gonna be 100% accurate by 2017 when they'll have a model ready for the field. EEG isn't the only way we're able to read minds. Functional magnetic resonance imaging identifies thoughts with even greater detail. Instead of electrical signals, fMRI machines measure blood flow to different regions in the brain. This could be used to tell whether people are telling the truth or not. When you lie, you use significantly more blood than you do when you tell the truth. Because when you lie, you have to think about the truth, the lie, and then think about how the lie is going to impact the rest of your answers. This technique still isn't admissible in court because the margin of error is still too high, and it's pretty easy to game the results if you know what you're doing. FMRIs can also be used to identify what a person is thinking. When you think of a certain word, it triggers multiple areas in the brain. Thinking about a cheeseburger might send blood to the area of your brain associated with food, but it can also send blood to the area of the brain associated with pleasure. Thinking about a sneaker might send blood to the area of the brain associated with activity, but also with aesthetics. ATR Computational Neuroscience Laboratories in Japan has used this technology to not only identify thoughts, but to recreate an image that a person sees. The image of the word neuron at the top of this picture is what was shown to a person while inside an fMRI machine. The image at the bottom of the picture is what scientists were able to recreate based upon the blood flow data they gathered. Here in the U.S., the Gallant Lab at UC Berkeley used the fMRI machine to measure several thousand different points in the brain in order to assemble a vast dictionary of thoughts. Then they downloaded 5,000 hours of random YouTube videos and used it to assemble video recreations of what a person is thinking. The video on the left is what a person was shown while he was in an fMRI machine. The video to the right was the recreation of those thoughts. None of the videos on the left were used to create the composite video on the right. Right now, in order to see what someone's thinking, they have to be wearing an EEG headset or lying down in an fMRI machine. So it's not really possible to read someone's mind without their awareness and cooperation. But remote EEGs have been around since 2002. They're currently not strong enough to read brain waves with enough detail to make out specific thoughts, but sensory technology is getting better and better all the time. Someday we may be able to pick up information from someone's mind without them even knowing it. In the next episode of Science Friction, I'm going to talk about how we can use telepathy to manipulate others. That's right. We're going to learn mind control. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for future episodes. Check out some of the previous ones. Check out the Science Friction Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter. And be sure to let me know what superpower you want. Oh, and I do know what you're thinking. And it disgusts me.